Well, well, thank you for inviting me to, to join you this morning and uh, to respond to the excellent report that's been published. It's, um, it, there are a lot of areas of common ground with the Select Committee report, but it's, it's great that um, others are looking at the same issues as well. And one of the things that has really um, brought home to me throughout the inquiry that we've run is how important it is to have good collaboration with other bodies in other countries and other jurisdictions that are looking at sim similar issues because uh, these bus the businesses are global businesses. It doesn't mean that all the responses have to be global, but we benefit enormously from understanding some of the same issues that people in other parliaments, other jurisdictions are looking at as well and learning from uh, the experiences um, not just of what, what's going on within those countries, but also the experiences of those bodies in dealing with the tech companies. And it really pleased me to see at some point uh, during the last year, you know, members of parliament in another country questioning Facebook based on evidence they're given to our inquiry you know, and challenging them in that way, which is not what they expected, I think. So it was a good way of building up a, a wealth of knowledge. And we've been you know, helped enormously as well by people who've been prepared to speak out you know, whistleblowers, you know, one with us today, you know, people who have, um, have been, able to, been able to sort of break this sort of code of silence that exists around many of these issues as well. Uh, and many of these big companies do rely on the fact that you know, we don't know really very much about their internal workings um, and to have people that will come forward and actually produce insights and documents based on the work they've done has been enormously helpful. And I think over the last 18 months or so, we've got ourselves in a position where I think we understand the issues far better. We understand that what we should be challenging the tech companies on far better than we do. And that, for me, should lay the groundwork this year for what I hope will be a year of action rather than a year, year of inquiry. And I think this report you know, comes up with some very helpful ideas and suggestions for that. I just wanted to pick up on one or two things uh, that you mentioned. Firstly, with regards to GDPR, I, I think GDPR is enormously important. Um, it really struck me that actually people in America looking at these issues uh, I think take the EU area very seriously and the GDPR rules very seriously. A lot of these issues are things that, it, that people in America would find difficult to legislate on and move forward, but there is an interest as to whether European standards will end up becoming sort of global standards and the norms that people expect in terms of establishing their data rights. So I think that is incredibly important. And what I do often is say to Americans as well, we get, we get the challenge on you know, impingement of freedom of speech, we want the tech companies to do more uh, to act against harmful content. Um, I do remind them that you know, Europe has a series of fun, you know, functioning democracies, even though we don't have the First Amendment. You know, and, and I think we still have free speech and we still have a, a free and open society, but we, you know, but we do have rules and standards that we expect people to maintain. I think we have a, you know, people may not always agree with the news they see from our broadcasters, but I don't think people would deny that we you know, live in a country with free speech, but we still live in a country where there is broadcasting code based on statutory you know, guidance overseen by an independent regulator, and I see no way no reason why companies like Facebook shouldn't have to adhere to the same principles. And I think when looking at the, ro the role of individuals and their freedom of expression and speech, um, it was put to me very well uh, last week at a conference I went to uh, that people, you know, sh people could expect freedom of speech, but they shouldn't necessarily expect freedom of reach. That the ability to actually <laughs> relentlessly target people with disinformation and messages of hate, abusing and using the systems that have been created by social media companies shouldn't be a right. That, pe that people have, you know, even, even if they have a right to express their own ideas. Um, there were some things in our, in our report that I think, I think there are some question marks over, over the application of GDPR to social media of companies like Facebook that are important, particularly around the way people is gathered, data is gathered about, about individuals. Um, because, and we talk about the, the, the sort of jargon we use in our report for this is inferred data. But there are a lot, under GDPR, there are a series of protected data characteristics your political opinions, your religious beliefs, your sexual orientation. Um, and people choose not to declare that when they set up a Facebook profile. Uh, but nevertheless, Facebook can guess what those are and sell that information to an advertiser through its lookalike audience function as well. And I think the information commissioner has rightly questioned the legality of that. And I think that is an area of challenge to companies like Facebook to say the sort of technology that's been devised to help sell us a pair of trainers might not necessarily be the right sort of technology to be used in, in, in spreading political ideas through a democracy. Yeah? And those, those ideas can be so easily abused. There is, so there is, a, I think, a duty of care that companies like Facebook have on content, and that was one of the uh, central to our recommendations, and I think the workings of this, this report as well, that where there is clearly content that's illegal, that should clearly be removed, but I think the areas of harmful content goes beyond simply what is legal and illegal, and this is where 
in particular the Americans sort of get, start to get, get into some difficulties in understanding this. Things like cyberbullying are bad and shouldn't be there. They can have real world harmful consequences, particularly on, on, on young and vulnerable people that experience it. And it's not unreasonable that we should expect the tech companies to enforce some standards to act against accounts that are engaged in relentless campaigns of cyberbullying. The relentless campaigns of disinformation, foreign states and actors running disinformation campaigns, extremist political organisations running disinformation campaigns. Any one of those individual acts might not necessarily be illegal in terms of what they're saying, but it's harmful. And I think to say to the tech companies, we should require you to act against known sources, uh, I think is a really important step we should take. I don't believe that, um, again, and this is where I would, uh, I would sort of think we need more than the current EU, EU levels. I mean, the EU directive um, you know, gives powers for takedown on content that's illegal, but as I said, I think, I think some of these issues are slightly wider than that. Um, I think it has, to be a com it has to be a statutory code, it can't just be a voluntary one. We can't rely on the tech companies policing themselves. One of the real problems we've, we've run into is that there are, there's, there's no real power of inspection inside, inside Facebook. If we get a Facebook with a problem, we are largely reliant on them to solve it, um, and we have largely have to take their word for it that they have done so. There's a, we don't really have the power to go in and check to see whether they've really done it or not. Um, when we raise some of these issues as well, you know, when we talk about um, organisations like the mainstream network running you know, uh, campaigns to get people to lobby their MPs to vote against a, a Brexit deal, and we still don't know who's, who's running those campaigns, we still don't have that information publicly. Uh, although I understand the Information Commissioner has now received that information from Facebook, a letter yesterday from Facebook saying that. So um, I, th I, don't know whether, I don't know whether that, that, that's been released confidentially, Facebook told me, but I, don't, but I think we've got a right to know, so I don't know whether the Information Commissioner will be able to tell us. But things like this are sort of fundamental to our democracy, to understand the way things work. Facebook holds this information, and we should have regulators that can go in and get it and check it. Uh, and I think that, that power, and, the, and I think for me, the, the, the lesson of the last year is that those, those powers have to be on a statutory basis. I think it would be great if we, can all work, if we can work to common European standards. I think it gives us more weight. But, that, but, but, but if, even if it takes us time to get to that level, it shouldn't mean we do nothing. You know? And I think one of the people, often the tech companies throw about this challenge, saying you know, there needs to be global standards, we can't have a balkanised system. Yes, it would be better, but we shouldn't make the, the, the sort of perfect the enemy of the good. You know? And if we have to start with our own national jurisdiction making progress, then we, sh we can and we should. Uh, and that's what I want to see this year. And uh, our recommendations, so, so, so much of which tied with what's in this report, you know, we, we want the government to respond to that. We'll have that response later this month. Uh, I hope in the form of the government white paper, which will be published then, we'll see a pathway towards you know, new legislation in this country that will, will, that will give us, will address some of the balance of power in favor of the citizen and against the, the, the tech platforms over which we really have very little very little influence. Thank you very much. Can I ask you to show your appreciation of the excellent work and the courage and commitment?